Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Wellspin India Q3 FY22 earnings conference call hosted by Edelweiss Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participant clients will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nehal Mahesh Cham from Edelweiss Securities Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Aman. On behalf of Edelweiss, I would like to welcome you all to the Q3 FY22 earning conference call of Wellspan India Limited. I would now like to hand over the call to Mr. Abhinandan Singh, Head Group Investor Relation at Wellspan Group, to introduce management and take it further. Over to you, Abhinandan. Thanks, Nihal, and good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Westman India, I welcome all of you on the company's Q3 FY22 earnings conference call. Uh, we have with us today Mr. Uh, Rajesh Mandayawala, Managing Director, Ms. Dipali Goenka, CEO and Joint Managing Director, Mr. Asil Jindal, Group CFO and Head Strategy, and Mr. Sanjay Gupta, the company's Chief Financial Officer. Um, as usual, we'll start the forum with uh, some opening remarks by our leadership team, uh, and then we'll open the floor for your questions. Um, uh, once the call gets over, should you have any queries that remain an, an, an unanswered post the earnings call, feel, please feel free to reach out to us. And with that, with that, I would like to hand over the floor to Ms. Dipali Goenka, our CEO and joint MD. Over to you, Dipali. Um, thank you, Abhinandan. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. We hope that you are safe and in good health. While India has witnessed a sharp rise in COVID-19 cases in recent weeks. The impact of the third wave has been mild so far. The tra trajectory of the pandemic is still evolving, and the recent increase in cases has slowed the pace of economic activities in January, but we expect the economy to regain momentum as this wave abates. Our board today approved the financial results for the quarter ended December 31, 31st, 2021, and I would like to highlight some key points. The company delivered a resilient performance during the quarter. Our unique value proposition to our customers, right from demand planning, forecasting, logistical support, innovation, traceability, to quality-defining products, ensured a stellar top-line performance, even in these challenging times. The business continued the growth momentum that we saw in the last two quarters, clocking revenues of 2,438 crores in quarter three, growing at 19% year on year, and 7,130 crores YTD, growing at 36% year on year. The home textile business delivered revenues of 2,251 crores, growing at 14% year on year, and 6,718 crores, YTD, growing at 32% year on year. And we are well on our way to another milestone of reaching $1 billion revenues in home textiles alone this year. The U.S. economy, which is the largest market for wealth funds, has been showing a strong comeback. Advanced estimates of U.S. retail and food services sales of 2021 were up 19%, year on year. On the back of this growth, we saw our home textile export grow by 35% year, year to date. The market share gain and growth have been broad based across the key businesses. Our flooring businesses grew 95% year on year in quarter three and 136% YTD. Domestic business continued its upward trend, witnessing 55% growth in Q3 year on year and 88% YTD. This demand resilience has, however, been accompanied by significant increase in energy costs, highest ever commodity prices, and continued global supply chain disruptions. As per Kotlu K index, cotton prices are presently at one of its highest levels ever historically and touched USD $2.64 kilos level this month. Elevated cotton prices due to the increased demand of cotton and yarn resulting from factors such as U.S. ban on cotton products from China's Xinjiang region, which accounts for one-fifth of the global cotton production and expected shortfall in supplies, 
continue to create serious challenges on revenue and profitability. While we have again gone back to our customers for price increases during the quarter to mitigate the quarter three cotton price increases, impacts of which would start coming in from Q4, we are now again seeing more than 20% increase in cotton prices recently. Hence, we are watching and monitoring the current situation closely, and we may have to revisit our pricing strategy yet again. On the logistics front, the industry continues to face heat due to container shortages, spot congestions, increased ocean freight rates, and sailing time. Further scarcity of truckers in a key end market, that is the U.S., is leading to serious challenges in movement of goods, including last mile deliveries to the retail stores. The partial availability of holiday season goods at shelves led to upheaval in retail, impacting demand and sales at retail levels. We currently foresee a resultant glut of stock in the supply chain and increase in prices, leading to a potential rebalancing of demand and a transitory correction going forward. We, however, continue to see positive results of a continued focus on growth drivers, innovation products, D2C initiatives and brands, and e-commerce, our emerging businesses, and a commitment towards ESG and sustainable growth. Our innovation product sales during the quarter were 510 crores, taking YTD sales to 1,636 crores, registering a YTD growth of 24% year-on-year and contributing 26% to the sales. The e-commerce and branded business at 388 crores grew by over 45% Y-on-Y, accounting to 18% of our revenue. With U.S. leading the growth, with 157% growth in U.S. branded business sales, Y&Y. We added 325,000 unique customers in Q3, and through Black Friday and festive period, over 15 Belson programs were amongst the top 100 ranking across the categories. In the U.S., our licensed brands recorded 66% growth in the calendar year, and these have been taken up. These have taken up 175% over shelf space with the key retailers. We are committed to grow both e-commerce and branded business to $100 million run rate, each by 23 and FY24, respectively. ESG continued to be the focus area for us through the quarter, as we view embedding sustainability as responsibility and opportunity to reinvent our business and the textile sector. Some of the highlights of Q3 are, Western India has been rated by Dow Jones Sustainability Index, one of the world's most renowned sustainability index, through the Corporate Sustainability Assessment 2021. And in this maiden assessment, Western India secured an ESG rating of 48, which is 62% higher than the average industry score. Our efforts to conserve, reuse, and recycle water are path-breaking and led us to winning the National Award for Water announced by the Ministry of Jal Shakti. The recognition came on the back of the social and environmental impact made by Wellspin's cutting-edge sewage treatment plant in the drought-prone Kutch district. Frost and Sullivan and the Energy and Resource Institute, Terry, also recognized Wellspin India for its sustainability practices and impact on the environment and communities at the Sustainability 4.0 Awards. Sustainability remains at the core of what we do, and through our Wellcrishy program, we aim to build a strong, self-reliant, and prosperous farming community that empowers over 15,000 farmers and 75,000 farm workers across more than 350 villages to sustainably produce over 15,000 metric tons of cotton from 80,000 acres. Circularity adopted across businesses is focused on use of recycled content in both textiles and packaging. Westman joined Sorting for Circularity India project, anchored by Fashion for Goods Amsterdam, a consortium project which aims to build a new textile waste value chain in India. As a leader in home textile manufacturing sector, we see extra, extraordinary possibilities to increase a positive impact. Be it our aim to be carbon and water neutral by 2030, obtain 100% of our cotton sustainably, or impact a million lives through corporate social value interventions by 2030, our ESG efforts drive measurable results. Domestic retail. Domestic home textile business recorded the highest ever quarterly sales of 127 crores, exceeding 100 crore sales for the first time, up 55% year-on-year 
and 40% quarter on quarter. Brand Belsman distribution now covers 470 towns and 5,424 stores with 550 store additions in the past quarter through strong acceleration plans. Spaces became the number one brand on Mintra while also witnessing the highest traffic on Spaces' own website in the current year of about 5 lakh plus customers in the month of November. Spaces launched its unique air purifying range collections with a 360 campaign of digital OH, print, and theater with 14 million unique reads. Advanced Textile. Our advanced Textile business revenue during the quarter stood at 63 crores. Spunley's business has been a revival in demand after stocks correction in all markets. However, escalated sea freights continued to be challenging for Europe, South America, and Far East markets. New orders were secured in North America, and Wet Vibes business added an upcoming Indian brand for Wet Vibes and another in cosmetic sheet mask. Industrial filtration demand continued to be healthy. Spun lace capacity at Telangana is underway and is expected to start commercial production in quarter four FY22. Flooring business. We are enthused by the growth being witnessed in flooring business, which grew 95% year on year and 20% to a quarter on quarter, achieving a record revenue of 191 crores. We continue to add additional large institutional customers in US and UK, and also made inroads in hospital hospitality chains in UK on the back of strong product differentiation. The hard flooring capacity usage has been enhanced significantly and is fully blocked now. Sales momentum is continuing on domestic flooring business, seeing a healthy growth quarter on quarter. Digital channel sales continue to do well. Marketing festive featuring Amitabh Bachchan pre Diwali had a reach of 103 million, and post Diwali brand participation in India New Zealand Cricket Series clocked a cumulative reach of 173 million. On product assortment, we added warm wood tones and click and lock tiles assortment. Flooring received recycle claim standard 100 certification for recycled polyester in carpet tiles. Our order book remains strong for exports, and our domestic business is showing green shoots and is adding to the top line of the division. Now, I would like to hand over the call to Sanjay to provide updates on financial numbers. Thank you. Thank you, Dipali. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Many thanks for joining the quarter three financial year 22 India earnings phone call. I'll give a brief overview of the financial numbers for the quarter before we open for question and answers. I'm delighted to share that during quarter three, the total income grew by 19% year on year and it stood at 2,438 crores. YTD December revenue grew by 36% to reach 7,130 crores. We earned an EBITDA of 331 crores in quarter three and EBITDA margin stood at 13.6% as compared to 16.9% last quarter. YTD December EBITDA stood at 1,178 crore, that is 16.5%, growing by 11% year on year. Coal price increases higher logistics costs, including about four times ocean freight hike and jump in commodity prices, all resulted in this adverse impact. As also mentioned by Dipali, we believe this to be transitory with our fundamentals remaining strong. Be it in our relationship with customers, our focus on innovation, digitalization and ESG, or in the increased focus on our D2C initiatives and emerging businesses, including flooring and domestic business. While the current adverse market situation may impact our earnings in the near term, our medium to long term outlook remain buoyant. Also to mitigate the impact of these cost increases, we have taken several steps. Number one being, we are rationalizing our fixed costs across functions and business units to partially set off the increases in power and logistic costs. And number two, working capital is being tightly monitored to ensure more liquidity and savings in finance costs. Profit after tax, after minority interest, stood at 132 crore in quarter three, and YTD December at 549 crore, growing at 34% YTD year on year. Our consolidated EPS for quarter three uh, of financial year 22 stood at rupees 1.34 as compared to 1.80 year on year. YTD December EPS 
is at 5.52 as compared to rupees 4.08 last year, growing by 35% year to date. On the forex front, as per practice and as mandated by board, we continue to hedge about 65% of our future receivables. Our average exchange realization for this quarter was 76.59 versus 74.08 in the corresponding quarter last year. Net debt of the company stood at 2,542 crore, a marginal increase of 9 crore over September 21. We have in hand over 377 crores of ROSCTL and RODTP scripts receivable and still to be encashed. Along with this, we would have been lower in net debt position as on December 21. The expansion projects of flooring, advanced textile and home textile businesses, which were started uh, last year, are in different stages of progress. Capital spent in financial, tw financial 22 on projects is expected to be around 550 crores, out of which 450 crores is already spent, YTD, December 21. Coming to segmental results, quarter three financial year 22, core business home textile revenue stood at 2,251 crores versus 1,967 crores during the same period last year, growing by 14% YOY. YTD December 21, corresponding revenue was 6,718 crores, growing by 32%. Quarter 3 EBITDA home textile stood at 313 crores at 13.9% as compared to 413 crores in quarter 2 at 17.4%. YTD home textile EBITDA stood at 1170 crores, EBITDA margin being 17.4%, growing by 5% year on year. During the quarter, revenue from flooring business was 191 crores up by 95% and 19% Q1Q. Q1Q. Uh, YTD December flooring revenue were at 472 crores, up 136% uh, year on year. EBITDA was at plus 10 crore as compared to a loss of 24 crores last year. YTD December EBITDA is at a loss of 11 crore vis-a-vis -vis 80 crore last year, a substantial improvement. The business is also witnessing significant increases in input raw material cost and higher freight cost, but we are passing on the cost increase to our customers, which has a lag time of a couple of quarters. Emerging growth businesses, which include the branded business, e-commerce business, flooring and advanced textiles, cumulatively grew by 62% year on year and contributed 26% to the top line during the year versus 22% contribution in financial year 21. With this, I leave the floor open for question and answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Anyone who wish to ask a question may please press star and one. First question is from the line of Ritesh Gandhi from Discovery Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. No, so, uh, congrats. Uh, so, you know, we've been hearing kind of positive commentary on the overall export home textile business from, you know, all of the players out there. Just wanted to get your own sense on is this a, a, a demand because end market is growing and then, in, and then in turn, how long is it that is sustainable? Is it India is, it, is, is actually going to continue to gain share and how large do you think we could ultimately end up with given our shares already like quite high? Or is it some inventory issues? Or how should we be thinking about the long-term growth prospects of the export business? Yeah, thank you. Um, 
So um, I'll just give a perspective. Um, I think we have talked about the supply chain glut that has uh, been there. Um, and the goods, I mean, I would just give you a perspective that the goods of, in fact, the Christmas season also haven't reached the shores of America. So there has been a complete delay on the east and the west coast. And um, the, uh, the home textile and the holiday season reported a growth of 14% though in the holiday uh, in the in the uh, you know in december but however however with the commodity challenges the retail correction that we are seeing um, in the terms of prices uh, we definitely will see uh, some correction happening in the quarter 1 and quarter 2 so though the long term plan for home textile looks good but as of now there would be an interim blip because of the supply chain issues the commodity and the price corrections that we see going forward. Just to add, looking slightly ahead, I think two to three years ahead, maybe even five years ahead. How, uh, given you guys are obviously the largest exporter out of India and, and even major export in America, how do you see overall end market growth? Uh, 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 kind of like leaving aside any like quarterly. Actually, Lee, and there may have blips which may happen in the next six to nine months. I still didn't get your question. Could you just clarify that, please? Sure. Hi, Shani. Like, given the slightly like, longer term outlook, actually five years out, how do we see overall like growth in the industry being per se as an export? Um, so I think uh, for us, uh, definitely uh, USA is been growing and will continue to grow, and UK, Europe, and rest of the world will contribute. But for wealth funds as a company, uh, we will have a domestic play that is going to be very, very strong, because as, as we see uh, the Indian economy also growing very robust, we will definitely see a contribution of the Indian economy and uh, the Indian uh, our brand spaces and wealth fund coming into play here. Uh, and uh, definitely that is going to be a very big play for uh, wealth fund. So overarching, yes, to your question, um, uh, the, uh, the geographies will grow, but for wealth fund, the focus on our emerging businesses like our brands in India spaces and wealth fund, our flooring business will definitely be something that we will see a lot of impetus contributing to our top line as well. Let me add to that. And uh, so, so overall, see, there is the consumption is growing. So there's no doubt, and, and uh, through this COVID period, it, it has gotten reinforced. And uh, just like Dipali said, there's almost a 15, 20% year-on-year growth uh, during this uh, Christmas holiday season. So, and this I'm talking about America. So there is robustness in, in demand, which we have seen over the last two years. Also, clearly now with this Inji and cotton situation, so, uh, so, so it makes it that much more difficult for China now to export particularly cotton products and, and tar sheets are from India predominantly cotton. So, so that, that also is uh, clearly playing to India's favor and uh, the leading players uh, here in India. So, so while there is a, this, I agree, there is a disproportionate share of, uh, of India within uh, this uh, particularly the category of sheets and towels, but there is room for, for that share to grow. So that is one. And two is it clearly opens up possibilities in other categories where China historically has been very, very dominant. And, you know, things like fashion bedding, where, you know, India has got an insignificant market share and China is uh, north of 70% of, uh, of uh, all imports into, into the U.S. So, and likewise, let, let's say the rugs and flooring products where China has got a, has, has got a very decent share. So, so these are categories which... Uh, you know, which could actually end up growing much faster. So, you know, the, even if you take a, let's say, five-year view, uh, this our, our thinking is that uh, this India's market, market share will continue to grow, both in cotton products and, and there'll be also acceleration on non-cotton products because of uh, the, the China plus one factor. Good question. Sir, and anything on the FTA updates with regards to EU update, uh, FTA or, or an FTA with hey, actually UK? So, Ritesh, uh, there are three FTAs currently under discussion. Uh, mm -hmm.
and they have been they have been under discussion for donkey's years now yeah. but what we know is uh, being uh, let's say this uh, part of the the, the association and policy making uh, uh, process so so there is very very serious intent now that we see from 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 our indian indian government to actually see these uh, these agreements through so this uh, there's an agreement with eu there's one getting discussed with uh, with australia there's uh, one being discussed with canada so so i think there is renewed uh, vigor uh, you know but uh, these things are easier said than done so you know while we are seeing energy uh, you know this we will have to wait and see by when they they actually materialize Thanks. Thank you. Our next question is on the line of Prathamesh from Access Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Ravi Kumar. This is the operator. Can you help me with your company name? Uh, Mr. Ravi Kumar, this is the operator. Can you help me with your company name, please? Uh, Mr. Ravi Kumar, I'm talking to Triple zero five one zero double two six nine triple zero. Can you help me with your company name? Mr. Ravi Kumar, this is the last call. Can you help me with your company name, please? No response. Joining you back to the call. It uh, of course is is America. It's picked up well. Having said that, uh, you know this this rising commodity prices and and uh, the supply chain ocean freight prices. so you know so the margins are not where we would like them to see and uh, you know we'll this uh, and we are making best endeavor to pass on all cost increases to the customers but uh, but it takes some time lag and uh, also see this there is a sensitivity uh, involved when you discuss pricing with the customer so you go to aggressive you'll go out get your price increases but then the consumption starts uh, deflecting and and reducing so so we are moving in a very calibrated manner uh, we are not so happy with, uh, with with our progress on the soft flooring side uh, you know this we can do much better than than where we are but you know obviously with uh, with offices remaining closed for a better part of the last two years due to covid and our fundamental our biggest product being carpet tiles uh, you know the demand was very slack and uh, and and so it's uh, you know the numbers are not where we want to see them uh and the other part is of course the wall to wall carpet area where we are seeing better traction than carpet uh, tiles but again not as much as uh, as one would like to see having said that over the last 3 4 months uh, some significant progress on business development has been made uh, we believe these uh, developments will will get uh, fruition uh, over the next couple of quarters and uh, we will see this healthier uh, healthier capacity utilizations on the on the soft flooring side and i'm talking about the international markets here and uh, uh, for the domestic business it's the same story so you know this uh, for the better part of the last two years offices remained closed uh, there was a conspect uh, this attitude of people to let people into their houses to get their floors done and so on so forth having said that uh, you know last quarter uh, we achieved where we were pre covid so you know this jan to march 2020 this uh, this our our october to december numbers in the domestic market are by and large this better than where we were in that quarter so uh, so we have reached there and uh, now we are seeing uh, let's say traction coming in 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 the domestic market as well and and uh, this efforts are being made to 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 become more penetrative with our distribution network also this we are discovering let's say this what is the right channel of marketing and so on and so forth so so all in all i think uh, you know this as a company uh, we are making good progress so we have done about 190 crores in revenue and growing and counting uh, in terms of capacity utilization we are at about 40 odd 40 odd percent and uh, and and there's also within the this idle capacity that we have we try and make product for our rug rug unit so we make grade uh, grade rolls and and send it out to our uh, to our rug business so we, we try and keep uh, some equipment occupied from that perspective but from a hard let's say this flooring business intent perspective we are at about 40% and uh, there's a large large room to grow also also this uh, our products are now 
uh, distributed in uh, you know 10 12 countries uh, on a regular basis all over the world both hard and soft lowering so so rapid progress is getting made and and we are hoping to see better traction come in uh, in uh, in the in the ensuing uh, this uh, financial year so so you know this in summary this we are not too happy with the progress we are making on the on the soft lowering side where we believe uh, the traction will start coming in a couple of quarters uh, on the hard flooring while uh, this uh, good progress is being made on the top line our good efforts are are in a way getting negated by the constant uh, increase in commodity prices and uh, but having said that uh, we are all very happy and enthused with with the way our businesses has come about uh, despite the covid situation we believe uh, we we have a winner in our hand we believe this business uh, will grow to a to will achieve potential uh, which we have been talking about for the last 3 4 5 years and uh, we also believe that the margins that uh, that we are aspiring will also come albeit uh, will take a couple of years for for the margins to fructify but uh, this all in all i think this we are seeing enough uh, in the marketplace to 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 give us the enthusiasm and and confidence that will eventually this hit the hit the numbers and and uh, the glory that we all set out for uh, when we actually started this business Okay. Thank you, sir. So, as my second question is uh, regarding the P&L. So this is one exceptional item, and also your interest cost has reduced despite increase in your uh, debt. So, just uh, clarify on these two things. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Prabhuji. So, the exceptional item that you see is the P&L is for the quarter three of about thirty-six crore. Uh, uh, we are taking a. Uh, um, provision because of the reduction in the realizability of our scripts in ROS CTL and ROD DTP uh, so that is the exceptional item that we have taken uh, interest cost uh, yes it's slightly down because we got uh, some interest uh, uh, incentives from the government and uh, in this quarter and that was accounted for in uh, only in this quarter and that is why it has uh, reduced our total overall uh, interest cost the interest uh, related to also flooring division the incentive that we got. okay uh, so do we expect this incentives to be continued in near future uh, and also regarding the 77 crore of the uh, e scripts left with us do we see any uh, further exceptional charges coming in from those as well um so interest first question the interest uh, uh, incentive would continue but not to that limit so it will now normalize to quarterly one and uh, as far as 377 crore of scripts in hand uh, we we believe that we will be able to uh, you know uh, not in a higher cost than what we have provided for we would uh, try to achieve within that so so let me just clarify so the benefits that we have uh, in our uh, flooring business will continue by and large through the tenure of the loan so the reason why we got a disproportionate credit this quarter is because this is the first time uh, you know this the incentive got received so whatever got received uh, in fact uh, the provisions that that we had made for uh, for interest incentive was lesser uh, and and we ended up uh, let's say this getting a getting more eligibility and uh, which was of course entitled so and we were conservative in making uh, this uh, uh, this projected uh, gains so 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 there is there is a disproportionate gain which has come in this quarter but the interest incentive will continue through the tenure of the loan uh, as per the state policy uh, that uh, this uh, the the state policy credit uh, and 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 the policy benefits uh, that have been allowed to us so i hope that answers your question and uh, the rates on the scripts are actually moving up now and not down so you know we believe that uh, there's uh, you know no further provisioning that will be required on this account okay sir thank you thank you that's it no i said thank you thank you A reminder to our participants: Please press star and one if you wish to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Aman Madrecha from Augmenta Research Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, actually, I have two questions. The first one is regarding, uh, like, can you 
explain the reason why there was a dip in margins of the home textile business quarter on quarter because in quarter 2 we stand at around 17 to 18% ebitda margin and the margins have come down to 14% currently and also what is the sustainable range of margins we are looking at the home textile space because uh, YOY in Q3 FY21 we did a margin of 22% from that time it's coming down only so are we ab not able to pass on the increased raw material prices to the interest of customers or what is the scenario happening in this space? So I just want to uh, add on, I think that's the question or anything else? I... Yeah, that's the question. Um, so commodities are at the historical highest effort and uh, starting, it started from 47 to 55 to 65 and we took we have taken two price increases, one in June, July, and the second was as close to November and December. But uh, even to the extent of just uh, yesterday, the prices have gone up again by 20%. So uh, fundamentally, it takes time for the prices to be passed on to the customers. And it is, it is a consumer market that we, we, should, we must appreciate. And definitely, the retail prices then definitely get impacted, and hence the buying also gets impacted of the consumer. So um, we, we are at a, let's not forget, we are at the record highest of prices in the terms of cotton, in the terms of coal, power that is, and uh, energy and supply chain uh, upheaval. So definitely, it, it definitely has reflected in our margins. And uh, we, we have managed to pass on the prices in November and December. And now we are, going, we are exploring what needs to be done in the next run because if we are going to pass on any more, if we are exploring, it's going to definitely impact the retail as well. So, uh, however, we have already had um, uh, two price increases. So, to clarify, to clarify, this all costs by and large that increase until November were passed on. And they were passed on through two price increases uh, to clients. And uh, so it's not about the ability to pass on the cost increases to the clients. So, but we need to be sensitive. And, you know, being if we rush things through, uh, it might actually affect uh, sales uh, and, and, and negatively impact uh, top line. So we need to be mindful of that. Also, the prices of cotton have gone to now 77,000 rupees a candy. So if you compare this to November, we are already 35% higher from that point. Now, these kinds of increases will certainly take a, first thing is we need to see how long are they sustainable? Are these prices going to stay? Are these prices going to react, come back to more realistic level? So, you know, this we can't just jump the gun and, and start shooting from the hip the next day, the price of cotton goes up because so we need to allow it some time. Uh, we believe this. We need to allow another month or two before you know this. Uh, before the cotton prices really settle down, and then go back to our clients asking for you know this uh, the, the increased cost uh, back to them. So you know that is the intent. And uh, and as I said, there is a need to calibrate because you know back to back knee jerk, this uh, significant uh, this price increases could uh, you know, severely dent uh, this top line as well. So we need to calibrate. This is not new to us. And uh, we have done this the last time around when cotton prices actually just crossed uh, $1. And we did it over three price increases. We have gone through two this time. Hopefully, if there is need, we will go back to the clients with the third one. And uh, to, to a very important question that you asked, uh, what do we believe is, is our sustainable margin? So. So gentlemen, this over the last 10, 15 years, this company over any five year period has delivered a 20% EBITDA margin. The business is strong enough, good enough to continue to sustain those levels of margins. Unfortunately, you will not see that over the next couple of quarters, but eventually this, uh, we will pass through everything and you know, this hopefully some, some, some cost, uh, this benefit will revert back and the rest of it, we will pass it on to the clients again. We have historically done it for 10, 15 years, and there's no reason why we should not be able to do it again. And the clients are all receptive. We are in this together. These are strategic relationships. So as I said, we are calibrating the whole approach. And, and mind you, this uh, when we get a tailwind, so as a company, we've also delivered 25, 26, 27% margin. So you know, this is a necessary evil, the cotton prices, 
uh, will keep going up and down. Unfortunately, this time, uh, you know, they are up 65, 70% and continue to rise. So, you know, it's taking a taking its toll on the margin. But we have seen this all in the past. This is nothing new. And, uh, you know, this eventually we will get back uh, to our historic, historical level of margins, and which is around the 20% mark. Now, it could be a percentage here and there. Uh, you know, this, uh, you know, those things can happen. But eventually we will get there. But uh, this, uh, I'm afraid it won't happen in the next two quarters. Uh, and sir, I had one more question. I just wanted to know till what level we are integrated in, in terms of backward integration from the yarn side and spinning side. Like what portion of the yarn is uh, actively consumed or produced in house? Just a percentage number on that side, if you can help. So good question. And, uh, and uh, so, uh, so historically, this if you look at, let's say this R, R, Capex plan. So we have actually not invested much in spinning over the last eight, ten years. And uh, at current consumption levels, uh, we are almost 40% of sourcing of of uh, yarns and and uh, other materials from the outside, and we produce 60% of the yarns for of of the consumption that we need. So, uh, and this has served very well for us. Uh, we believe that you know this historically uh, that spinning is the lowest proci. Let's say this in within the value chain. Uh, of, of textiles. Uh, it's of course different the last couple of years where the margins have shot up and uh, you know candidly that has reflected on our margins as well. So but uh, you know this being light on spinning has, has uh, served us well for 15-20 years and uh, you know this and we think you know this give or take a few quarters but you know this the, the spinning margins will return back to normal and uh, when that happens uh, you know, this we are comfortable with our current, uh, you know, this blended strategy of making it in-house and and uh, continuing to source uh, yarn and fabric from the outside. So, you know, so but I, I I candidly confess that at this moment it is hurting us. Perhaps this is the first year when it has hurt us uh, over the last 15 years. I believe we have always gained by by sourcing uh, yarn from the outside. So, so just to clarify, like 60% is a source from outside, right? 40% is sourced from the outside. Okay. 60% okay. is made. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and so just one more one more uh, addition to this, but like, are we seeing any uh, supply side issue from the yarn? Like, is there in a like if, uh, is there any uh, supply side issue on the cotton yarn front, or it's easily available? I think uh, I can take that one. The supply chain is, uh, you know, the challenges are in the costs and the prices. That definitely is, an, uh, that that's where we definitely see uh, kind of a challenge for sure. Um, however, uh, you know, uh, while we might be looking at uh, the availability of fine yarns, the coarser yarns are have, have been a challenge. Uh, somewhere, I think there has been the supply chain disruption, and also in principle, the availability of cotton. In the scenario, so uh, yeah, there has been a little disruption that side. But I think going forward, we'll be able to. Uh, I think it is going to be mobilized. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Our next question is in the line of the Mancha from One Up Finance. Please go ahead. <coughs> thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just delving a little bit on the previous question. Uh, you know, uh, if one sees the drop in the margins from uh, 21-22% to, I mean, I'm talking about YOY, and if you juxtapose the capacity utilization, you have also gained from the operating leverage, so-called, on an overall basis. So if one has to kind of dissect, uh, you know, cotton sourcing is well within you, uh, the uh, logistics cost, which is... Uh, possibly exogenous to the uh, company. And the third part is the operating leverage. So uh, you have already also gained uh, prima facie, I would presume so, from operating leverage, which means the margin dilapidation has been slightly higher. So how much do you hope to recover over next few quarters? And especially uh, this is a repetition because uh, from the other textile companies that we have interacted, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, their ability to pass on uh, somebody like an Arvind, of course, the segment is different, but uh, their ability to pass on uh, has been much higher. So, is uh, and given that you know in home textiles the value per se is much higher than a garment, uh, is there uh, some resistance to the price changes uh, or our ability to you know kind of uh, take on price increases because this is a phenomena which the buyer would be knowing very openly. So I'll pitch in here, and Arvind, if you can just uh, pitch in later, also surely. Um, I think uh, one thing when you're talking about Arvind, uh, they are very seasonal in the terms of garment. It's fashion oriented, and the season oriented. For home textile, it is cost, and 70% of our business is replenishment business. Sure. And this is cost business, and hence the pricing plays a very key role in the terms of a unit cost. For, uh, for a retailer. So it's very, very different. So uh, while uh, an apparel manufacturer or a garment manufacturer, it's easier for him to pass because it's a season, uh, season to season that he can take on that price. So that impact doesn't show and reflect that much. Vis-a-vis -vis a core business, which is a replenishment program year on year, our programs are going on for now over five to six years. You know, so that definitely does impact on the retail as well. So um, that that definitely is a key thing if you if you comparing it to garments. However, I think even looking at and we we spoke about it, our relationships with our customers is very very strategic, and we have managed to pass on two price increases. And if we can literally say that that if you talk about a you know a, a towel or a sheet. Uh, you know, you and if you increase the retail prices to that extent where you're seeing the Kotluk index go up by over 60 to 70 percent in the past seven, eight months, I think uh, it, it is a tremendous impact uh, for the consumer. So th there would be a very calibrated reaction to that, I must say that. Uh, agreed. Uh, um, I mean, just to recalibrate that question, uh, what is the amount of price increases you would need to take to, uh, if you have to be, you know, in line uh, for the previous margins that you have, uh, you know, just done? So, what is the uh, what is the percentage margin or uh, percentage uh, hike that you would need to take just to be in line with the last year, for example? So, let me take this, Dipali. So. Uh, you know, this is a constantly moving goalpost. Uh, so this. Uh, no, if we freeze the freeze the cotton prices to the current prices, which is what you mentioned about seventy-seven thousand rupees a candy. Correct. So this is exactly what I was saying previously. That everything until November was passed on, gentlemen, through the two price increases that we gained. By and large, everything got passed on to the customer. So it's not about the ability of the company to pass this thing on. And uh, uh, this, we have great and strategic relationship with our clients, and there's a fair degree of transparency in the way the product gets costed. The question is that how swiftly do you want to go back to your clients? Abhi November mein khatam hua nahi, uske baad hum this again we go back and sit in front of them in January. So, so the business, there is a risk of the business getting disrupted. And what I mean by that is that sales could just nose dive if uh, if we don't be careful in this area so so this the company is now 25 years into this business and understands let's say the consumer behavior and uh, so this it, it needs to be handled very delicately very sensitively and uh, and some patience needs to get exercised now unfortunately we get measured quarter on quarter but uh, businesses cannot be run quarter on quarter so uh, you know this we have long term relationships and uh, we need to calibrate our approach and uh, and, uh, and and the way we move on these uh, these uh, these uh, headwinds uh, and cost increases to the clients. So I I don't think uh, there is there is any doubt on the ability to do it. That the the question here is that what is the rational and logical way of doing it, and when do you time it? So so we need to be very sensitive and careful on on, on that area, and which is what we are trying to do. So. So you know that uh, at, at these levels we need to pass on seven eight percent to answer your question. So, so you know it's another seven eight percent of 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 price increases 
or thereabouts uh, should get us back to let's say those 80 20 percent margin levels but you know the, the the thing is we have done the last increase and those products that we are shipping with the increased price have not even hit the shelf now before that you go back and sit sit with the customer so abhi ek retail price settle nahi hua uske pehle hum fir ye discussion shuru kare business doesn't happen that way and sure, uh, sure. so unfortunately we have to we have to take a, a slightly longer term view then uh, you know this our measurement criteria which is a which is a quarter so so you know so be it uh, but uh, you know we, we got to protect the long term let's say this uh, this uh, sanctity of the business and also our credibility and you know this at times of crisis you need to be stand you need to stand with your clients and uh, you know be collaborative rather than pushing through you know this every single increase that comes your way so you know as i said there have been instances when they have allowed us higher margins so sure. you know it's hard to pay back and you know this will take a few quarters of pain so that uh, you know this we can calibrate this whole thing but right. eventually we'll get there for 15 years we have got, we have done this and uh, we believe that the company's business is strong enough to do it one more time yeah two ancillary questions uh, uh, with uh, on the same parlance you mentioned that about 60% is in house uh, that 60% in house would mean uh, how many months of inventory of cotton that we normally uh, you know kind of store so so you know in a normal situation cotton is seasonal yeah so you know the season is october to september normally you know this you 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 tank up on cotton in uh, in december and jan that's when the arrivals maximize but unfortunately arrivals have not surged to the levels this year as 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 one would have wanted and which is why the spike in in current prices so right now uh, you know this uh, we are not uh, sitting on on big stocks and to be honest at these prices we are not comfortable to build stocks as well so you know and these have been as the pali rightly said these are all time high prices and uh, you know this one thing like a government intervention and and the whole thing could come tumbling down or you know this a a, a ban on 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 export of cotton it happens about 8 10 years back or something you know so it could come tumbling down and and you are then left with saddled with very high cost inventory in your system so so we are certainly as a company not comfortable building stocks at these levels and we will not build uh, i am not saying that the prices can't go up but uh, you know as a company we are not comfortable building at these levels no sir what i meant was that if uh, normal situations would have prevailed then then this 60% would mean how many months of inventory of cotton at your then, then we would have been we would have been carrying 5 6 months of cotton by the middle of february year so you know this in a oh, normal oh. season we would have covered uh, you know this half uh, maybe 5 6 months of cotton by this time sure sure and uh, coming to the uh, uh, the flooring business i think uh, you know uh, two quick things uh, uh, there is a massive uh, ramp up and uh, you know we are close to break even uh, how do how, can you give some guidance uh, you know how would you ramp up this business in the current year and next year and uh, are the distribution channels and all of that uh, kind of almost uh, in place so uh, good question and uh, uh, thank you for for acknowledging uh, the good work that the that the company has done uh, we believe we are going to be this uh, in terms of top line uh, you know this quarter should be steady and uh, you know we should be we, we should be steady and uh, the reason why we are not in a hurry to ramp up is again the same the commodity price surge and uh, you know so this at you know to get locked in on on larger volumes of business where you know enough margins are not getting made so we are not in a hurry to do that uh, we are waiting for the markets to stabilize on this side we believe they should stabilize in the next two or three uh, months where uh, you know this we believe that the commodity prices should uh, should uh, definitely stabilize in this quarter and uh, and and which is when we will uh, negotiate long term uh, businesses uh, with with our client and and hopefully this the volumes will also start surging we are not even halfway through uh, so so you know this with what we can do in terms of 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 capacity we are not even halfway with uh, with the current volume so there's a long way to go uh, there's a long way to go on the soft flooring side also but what i can tell you is that uh, you know despite covid this uh, we are very proud of the work that our teams have done so for 18 straight months 
in a new business, there was no face-to-face -face meeting with the client, and, and with those constraints with the hands tied to the back, uh, we have built this business. Uh, now the boys have started traveling, and face-to-face uh, -face meetings have started happening. So, uh, you know, this will result into a faster business development. I think internationally, uh, we, we have progressed very well. In the domestic market, I think uh, we have progressed well. Uh, so, you know, there's more than 1,000 outlets today for uh, for our products to for for customers to buy from. But to be very honest, uh, there is calibration that needs to get done. So, you know, are we in the route outlets? Uh, is our display right? So, you know, so it's a learning curve. Uh, we are going through all that. Uh, what I know is uh, we are in very very capable hands with uh, Manjari leading this uh, this domestic charge in the business. Symptoms are good. Uh, margins are definitely under pressure, but uh, as I said, we have gotten back to pre-COVID levels, and uh, and the improvement in the domestic market we are counting. And thankfully, all all parts of our business are firing in the domestic market. So whether it be office space, commercial space, uh, carpet tiles, wall to wall in 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 hotels and and uh, cinemas, artificial grass, or uh, the, the 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 luxury tiles in the residences of the people. So. So sales are coming through now in all the areas, all the products that, that we are currently doing. Of course, nowhere close to where, where we aspire them to be, but, uh, uh, that, but uh, definitely this attraction is improving. And if you, were, uh, if you would ask me, uh, are you satisfied? No, there is a lot more work to be done. Have we done enough? I think yes. So you know, considering uh, it's a new product, relatively less, lesser understood, I think uh, the team has done a fine job. And uh, the calibration process will keep happening over the next few years. But what uh, what I can tell you is the product is well accepted in the market. Uh, you know, this we are doing almost a crore on on digital leads already. So you know, this uh, and that can you know with an average ticket size of ninety thousand one one lakh. So you can imagine that that you know this if if if, if, if such a young company with such a young product and a relatively lesser known product. So we've already you know, hit a one crore run rate. So, so I think calibrations are happening on on the product placement, positioning, as well as price in all the areas. And and uh, this, what I believe now is that uh, you know, this all of us will see constant improvement in this area. And uh, we are enough excited, not so excited with the with the current margins uh, that we are currently operating in. But you know, this as things stabilize with the commodities, I think margins will also come. And uh, I think the top line up will also continue to to improve uh, in the ensuing uh, quarters and the years. Uh, thanks. And uh, one last question, if I can squeeze in: uh, uh, How uh, how do you accrue and book uh, the ROCTL and uh, uh, scripts uh, in in the uh, books of accounts? Yeah. So you have some pending uh, 377 crores, you said. So how does it get? Uh, so the booking of ROSCTL is based on the actual exports. So okay. once the export is done, uh, on that basis, on the basis of that bill of lading, you account for it. So where there is certainty, this we account for it. If there is uncertainty, we, we become circumspect, like we were in, in the flooring business. So this time we got the eligibility certificates from the government, and, and there, was, there was certainty we didn't account for it. and. And the interest gain is is demonstration of that. So, you know, so generally as a company, we are very conservative, recognizing revenue. Uh, if there is a if there is a expenditure risk, uh, you know, we would instantly take it on books. And and we've been following this now for almost 15 years. So, you know, this we have been conservative with our accounting, and we want to continue to remain so. Great. Thank you so much uh, for all those elaborate answers. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that would be our last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Dipali Goenka, CEO and Joint MD, Wellspun India, for closing comments. Thank you, and over to you. So I just want to conclude by saying that in the near term, I expect the operating environment will continue to remain challenging, and inflation is likely to impact the volumes and moderate growth. Commodities remain volatile and elevated, witnessing further sequential inflation in the coming quarters. We will continue to work with our customers on different measures, and that will help mitigate the cost pressures while driving operational efficiencies and cost savings initiatives at our end. 
As he successfully transitions from being a manufacturer to being the FMCG of home textiles, our investments in a D2C initiative, digitalization and analytics are helping us in understanding consumer behaviors and forecasting demand, thereby enabling us to serve our customers better. So um, I would end here by uh, saying thank you for being there today and um, I hope you stay safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Edelweiss Securities Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.